Using data from NASA's Parker Solar Probe, a team of solar physicists did a study and calculated the distribution of electrons within the sun's electric field. From the distribution of electrons, the physicists were able to determine the size, breadth, and scope of the solar electric field more clearly than it had been done before, and also describe how the electric field interacts with the solar wind. Physicists led by the University of Iowa calculated the distribution of electrons within the sun's electric field based on the observations made by the Parker Solar Probe as it flew within a record-breaking 0.1 astronomical unit or almost 15 million kilometers from the sun. This is closer than any spacecraft has ever dared to go before. It allowed the scientists to calculate how electrons are distributed within its electric field and therefore understand its size and scope. Jasper Halicus, an associate professor in the Department of Physics and Astronomy at Iowa, stated that you can't make these measurements far away from the sun. You can only make them when you get close. It's like trying to understand a waterfall by looking at the river a mile downstream. The measurements we made at 0.1 AU were actually in the waterfall close to the sun. The solar wind is still accelerating at that point, and it is really just an incredible environment to be in. The sun's electric field is generated by the interactions between protons and electrons formed when hydrogen atoms are stripped apart in the intense heat generated by fusion deep within the sun. Electrons with masses 1,800 times less than that of protons are blown outwards and are less constrained by gravity than the heavier protons. The heavier protons with their positive charge exert some control, pulling some electrons back due to the familiar attraction forces of oppositely charged particles. The electrons that are blown outward are trying to escape but protons are trying to pull them back, and that is the electric field. If there were no electric field at all, then all the electrons would blow away and be gone. But it is kept all together as one homogeneous flow due to the presence of the electric field. Now, let's take a vast bowl and imagine it as the sun's electric field, and marbles rolling up the sides at different speeds as the electrons, some of the marbles are fast enough to cross outside the bowl, while others are not fast enough. So they end up rolling back toward the bowl's base. So what we are measuring are the ones that come back and not the ones that don't. Therefore, there's a boundary in energy between ones that escape the bowl and those that don't, which can be measured. Since the Earth is close enough to the sun, we can make accurate measurements of electrons' distribution before collisions occur further out that distort the boundary and obscure the imprint of the electric field. From those measurements, physicists can understand and learn more about the solar wind, a fast-flowing stream of charged particles emitted by the sun, which cause auroras on Earth and can affect satellites and communication systems. In addition, they can learn about the million mile per hour jet of plasma from the sun that washes over the Earth and other planets in the solar system. What physicists found is that the sun's electric field affects the solar wind in some way, but not as much as it had been thought. Finally, we can put a number on how much the solar wind's acceleration is provided by the sun's electric field. It looks like it's only a tiny portion of the total. It is not the primary component that gives the solar wind its kick. This means that the solar wind is getting most of its kick through other mechanisms. The solar wind is mainly caused by the hot solar corona, which is the outermost layer of the solar atmosphere, expanding into space. Physicists are still doing more research on the distribution of electrons within the sun's electric field to find out more about the phenomenon.